Hey everyone, it's Eric Dorr here and it's Objective Personality Wednesday and today we're gonna be talking about some critical perspectives on objective personality. First of all, let's talk about their ethics and personality typing process. Before we get started, I want to talk about an announcement I have. I have made an objective personality personality test. Yeah, the link will be down below. So take the test and let me know what your objective personality personality test is result is and first of all let me say this is just the first draft so i'm currently evaluating the dichotomies and testing everything so take it with a grain of salt don't try to get the same uh, result as you expect from an mbti test note that you can be a different person in op than you are in the mbti or 16 personalities just look at okay does these definitions and these questions work with the answers that I got. That's the best way to evaluate this personality test. Now let's get on with the video. First of all, objective typing. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Objective personality argues that you cannot really accurately type yourself. You tend to actually want to be everything at once. Most people peacock. They pretend to be something they're not. They often pretend to be the opposite type of what they are. Yeah, most people want to be good at everything and most people don't like to talk about or admit to any weaknesses. Most people tend to be a bit arrogant or limited in their perspective of themselves. They focus on one person trait, uh, something they want to demonstrate to the world and they ignore everything else about themselves. So objective personality says, I, as a trained expert, can type you. We have a system of operators that work together to type you. So we'll be multiple people doing an experiment to make sure that we come to the right type result for you. We're going to be looking at uh, multiple feedback sources from you, multiple different videos, time and things like that to make sure that we can see an accurate version of yourself, not just in this specific situation, but as you are in general. At least that's the goal of objective personality typing. I say self-typing is the way. I've always said self-typing is the way. So who's right? Is it better to type yourself or is it better to let an expert type you? First of all, I know that it can be difficult to type yourself. I know it can be difficult to have an accurate, informed opinion about yourself. It can be really difficult to see how you fall across these definitions. I'd say if you need the help of an expert and you have the time and the money and resources to do so, definitely consider getting an expert advice. Experts can help you understand where you go wrong, they can help you see where other personal types tend to struggle, they can help you evaluate your process, they can help you give you feedback on where you are at the moment, they can show and answer questions and doubts you might have. But an expert cannot say 100% this is your type, take it or leave it, bye. An expert who is providing a good service is going to not just provide you with a type but also a good explanation. Why are we saying this type? What made us say this type? What was it that caused us to think this about you? An expert is supposed to help you train you in the system and how it works down to show you where you can go wrong and where you might get lost or uh, give you an outside perspective and in the end I perceive, I believe in informed self-typing. That means you should type yourself based on informed, <laughs> uh, an informed assumption. You should get all the information possible. You should ask for objective feedback. You should ask for friends and family members to evaluate you. You should ask questions. You should investigate, take time to introspect, take time to know the theory and understand it and then make an assumption based on that. You shouldn't just rush to a conclusion, you shouldn't get too tied into a type, you shouldn't pigeonhole yourself, and you shouldn't purely trust 100% opinion of an expert. No matter how helpful or informed that person might be, you have to be able to have the value of this. And why? Why do you need that value of it? Well, because you are the one being typed. You are the one being typed, so you need to know what it means. And if you don't know what it means to be typed a certain way or what the certain type means, you cannot draw an informed conclusion about who you are, what lifestyle you should have, what work you should do, what kind of relationships you should have, or any of those kind of questions. You can't answer flow or happiness. You can't understand lifestyle questions if you don't take a hard look at yourself. What are your goals? What is your lifestyle like? What do you like about your life? What would you like to be different? 
Those are the kind of questions you need to ask yourself. And those are the kind of things that Carl Jung and Jungian functions and objective personality can help you understand. This is a tool, a framework for you to get perspective on your life and your decisions and your relationships. It's never enough to simply trust the view of an expert. You have to be able to evaluate the results yourself. Now, another problem with objective personality is that it can sometimes trip over its own statistics. Objective personality has come up with a series of different coins and 512 types. 512 types. And what I'm seeing is there are so many concepts and so many coins, but not enough time spent working on and elaborating on each specific coin and concept. In fact, many of the definitions are simplistic a little bit stereotypical and superficial. Yeah, sometimes when I hear them talk about the personality type or a coin, they rush over it. They make a simple, quick definition. And that's great. That's a good starting point. Certainly, you should be doing that. More people should be doing that. I know a lot of systems that get caught up in the opposite problem. A lot of systems and experts get caught up in abstracts. They come up with a very loose or abstract definition of a cognitive function, but they can never put it in a practical context. Okay, objective personality, good on you. You are making definitions practical and applicable. That means people can take what you say and apply it to their decision-making process, their thought process, and things like that, and that's great. But you're going to have to do the work too. You're going to have to do the deep diving. You're going to have to sit down and think about the exact nuances of each function. And you're going to have to think about the exact limits and boundaries of each coin. You're going to have to take time to make sure that these coins don't contradict each other's. And you're going to have to write it all down and do the maths and do the logic as well. You can't rush to <laughs> simply applying it. You have to also look at and test it and analyze it and have somebody do that work for you. Finally, my third problem with objective personality is that they can get kind of negative about the personality types. A lot of time they speak from judgment of negativity, of anger or annoyment of the types and often they do it with humor and I can find it funny humor. But sometimes I feel like they're skipping over the empathy part. <laughs> They're glossing over it and I understand, yeah, not everyone can be good at everything and hey, I understand your thought process and how you're coming into this. You're not coming into this necessarily because you're looking to build empathy, but you're building it, you're coming into it because you find it fun and interesting and intellectually stimulating. But empathy needs to be there. You know, you have to have a base level of respect for people in the sense of I can joke about your type and I can laugh about it, but I know that everyone's different and I know everyone is unique and I mean no offense. You know, you have to make sure that that's clear, that people know that, okay, I'm not pigeonholing, bashing and stereotyping on you just for fun. I'm not just creating a, a demon version of your type or uh, just laughing at you. I see you and I see your struggles and I understand where you are and where you're coming from and who you are. So you need empathy. You can never skip the empathy when you're understanding psychology. You can't get caught in the arrogance trap. You can't get too stuck in your own bias or in your own self-certainty or your own perceived goodness. Just like you say, you cannot, uh, people are not, are constantly projecting their own strengths on the world and thinking their world would be better the way they are. But we have to understand that it would be better if everyone understood themselves and if everyone showed each other's respect. Now, the last and most important point of criticism is in regards to self-development. Objective personality is pushing an argument that is work on your demons. Stop working your saviors. Start working your demons. That means stop working on your dominant function. It's great. <laughs> start working on your inferior function. It sucks. <laughs> and a lot of the time I find this varies. I know some people I encounter are people in the grip of their inferior function. People that suck at it, people that can't do the work, that uh, are terrible at their inferior function. But I also encounter people that are stuck in their inferior function. People are constantly obsessing about it, worrying about it, feeling like they have to be it and use it all the time and feeling bad whenever they do anything fun or light or easy for themselves. I'd say for personal growth purposes, 
a lot of people also need to learn to work their saviors. A lot of people also need to work their flow functions. You also need to allow people, people need to allow themselves the ability to have fun and to enjoy and to do things that get them energy. Your savior gets you energy, gets you into a flow state. Your demons take energy and require stress in order to be accessed. And you know, it's important stress, you know, it builds resilience, it builds character, it's good stress for sure. But you can't live your life based on stress. You can't live your life constantly pushing yourself and being hard on yourself, constantly stressing yourself to work on yourself, do more, be better, be faster, be smarter, you know. You have to allow yourself to be a full person with strengths and weaknesses. So these are my main critiques against objective personality and I'm gonna talk about these more in future videos and trust me, I wouldn't be digging into OP if I didn't find a really interesting system and I'm really looking forward to talking about their concepts. I just wanna make sure that you know there are ethical problems of objective personality that have to be addressed and improved in the future. And I'm sure they will be improved, but we do need to talk about it, and make sure that we work on it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed the personality test. Thank you all for watching and see you all in the next video.